So we're going to turn to the town manager at this time to uh, uh, provide the town manager's, manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and I'll just wait a second. In meetings, events, and other announcements, the town beach hours are Saturdays and Sundays, 12 p.m. to 6 p.m., and Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., and the town beach will close Labor Day weekend. The farmer's market is every Sunday from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. until mid-October, and that's on the Ritter lawn. For board and committee commission vacancies, here, the following is a list of vacancies. One vacancy in the Architectural Preservation District Commission, two vacancies until the next annual town election on the Board of Assessors, one vacancy until the, until the next annual town election for the Cemetery Commission, two vacancies on the Finance Committee, one regular member and one associate vacancy for the Green Communities Committee, one member at large vacancy for the Open Space Committee. We just received a resignation from um, Pat Hackey uh, for the Park Commission, and so that vacancy would be until the next annual town election, and one vacancy for the Personnel Committee. Anyone interested in any of these positions can find the volunteer application on the town website, complete it, and return it to the Select Board's office. And if you have any questions on any, any of these positions, you can contact our office at 978-582-4130, extension 144. Who resigned from the Parks Commission? Pat uh, Hakey. Hot. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm, Thank you. You're welcome. For employment opportunities for the town, the following are the current positions open. The assistant to the sewer business manager, which is a 19 hours a week position. Assistant to the town accountant, which is 32 hours a week. Assistant meal site manager, 19 and a half hours a week. Conservation administrator, 36 hours a week. Finance director, 40 hours a week. Heavy equipment operator, 40 hours a week. Principal assessor, 40 hours a week. Two seasonal cemetery laborers. And one uh, videographer position, for, which is approximately two to 10 hours a week on average. Any interest in these positions, you can find the job postings on the town web website as well and how to apply. An update on invitation for bids and request for proposals. The invitation for bids for the operations and maintenance of the Lunenburg wastewater collection system were due on August 2nd and we received one bid from the company who currently has the contract, Chad T. MP LLC, and that contract has been awarded to this company. A request for quotations for trash and recycling consultant services is due by August 31st, and this is paid through the Recycling Dividends Grant. We received another opioid settlement payment in the amount of $14,709, bringing the opioid settlement stabilization fund balance to $99,449. The police chief will be submitting an article for the fall town meeting to request funds from this account to pay for costs for the co-response mental health clinician. Can you, I have a question on this, Heather. Mm -hmm. What's, the, can you just help me understand the link between a mental health clinician and opioid settlement stabilization fund? I think that will be part of when the chief comes in and does his presentations for that article. Okay. I think um, in general, they find that there's typically a um, link between drug use and um, mental health um, related issues. For sure. Mm -hmm. So, 80% <laughs> of people. I'm putting who are, it the most simply. Yeah, roughly 80% uh, of people who are incarcerated committed those crimes under the influence of drugs and alcohol. So, mm -hmm. for sure, it has an impact on crime. Mm -hmm. But I thought we were going in the direction of making sure that these funds were available to families that had people that were struggling. Um, with this crisis to be able to, you know, use these funds for treatment and other purposes? There were multiple purposes identified as possible eligible uh, uses of those funds. All right. Mm -hmm. well, I'll follow with you. Mm -hmm. I have more questions on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. But there will be more to come when the chief presents on that All article. Right. 
As I started um, the last meeting I was at, um, a section of the town manager report dedicated to employee highlights, um, just to call out different uh, employees and departments and in no way to eliminate or um, leave anyone out. This is basically, um, there'll be a variety every report of different people. So um, I'll start with the end. I think you'll notice a theme here, the departments um, in my report tonight, mostly surround um, issues with vacancies and uh, staffing issues that have caused uh, those departments to really step up to the plate and put in additional time and efforts. For the Council on Aging, thank you to all the, all the volunteers and staff at the Lunenburg Adult Activity Center. They have been short staffed during the last several months especially in the kitchen, and the staff and volunteers have stepped up to the plate by filling in where needed in the kitchen, by learning how to job share, driving multiple meals on wheels routes, and just going the extra mile to keep the center up and running. The kitchen staff includes Pamela, uh, I'm gonna butcher Pamela's name. Mila Kangas. Mila Kangas, Elsa Watson, and Ann Penny, and the kitchen volunteers are Joyce Boyce and Deb Lincoln. The Council on Aging van drivers are always ready for a challenge. Currently, MART is using Lunenburg as a test site for new driver software, but our drivers always manage to get passengers to their destination, destination safely. The van drivers are Dave Gallagher, Kimberly Moore, and Michelle Bovo. A special thanks to Jim McGuigan, who, although he has tried to retire as a driver, agreed to come back anytime as an on-call driver when needed. Thank you to all the Meals on Wheels drivers, which include Laura Busum, Cynthia Romano, Betty Orlo, Walter Orlo, Larry Latart, Robin Roach, Trisha Arsenal, Bob Hamill, Elise Schofield, Robin Silmi, Luann Longnecker, Carol McShane, Robin Roach, and Melody Nielsen. Thank you to the Outreach Coordinator, Pauline Roy, and to the Council on Aging Director, Sue Doherty, who always goes above and beyond in managing the center and making the center a welcoming place for seniors and trying to improve the lives of our seniors. The Land Use Department. As noted in last week's meeting, the lack of having a Conservation Administrator has caused a backlog of work for that office and has caused more questions and follow-up on conservation-related issues that have been directed to the Land Use Director, Adam Burney. Thank you to Adam for trying to field the questions that have been directed your way due to the absence of the Conservation Administrator and working with the Assistant Town Manager on interviewing any applicants with relevant experience. The Treasurer Collector's Office. This past year, the staff in the Treasurer Collector's Office has had to work extra hours, including Fridays and Saturdays, due to the number of abatement refunds and a vacancy in that office that caused a backlog of work. The staff has also had to address angry and upset residents repeatedly for many months. Thank you to the Assistant Treasurer, Sue Murchie, Collector Principal Clerk, Aaron Mahoney, and to the Treasurer Collector, Mylene Malari. For the Assessor's Office, it goes without saying that this year has been especially difficult for the Assessor's Office and the Board of Assessors. The current interim Principal Assessor, Rena Sweezy, came out of retirement and assisted the, time, the town in our time of need. Assessing Administrative Assistant, Sheila Cragen, has been amazing and has worked extra hours in order to keep up with her regular duties and the abnormal amount of calls, emails, and foot traffic to that office this year. So thank you to both Rena and Sheila for keeping that office functioning. All right, and thank you to the town manager for the town manager's report. Are there any questions to Heather? I have two other updates that I just wanted to um, also give the board um, for our third quarter preliminary tax. I reached out to uh, do our, our representative, Becky Boucher, about that. And she gave me some additional information in a IGR, which is the informational guidance release. That um, so, what will happen is after a special town meeting, the um, we would do a pro forma recap, they call, um, and issue a estimated third quarter bill. And if it's sent out by December 31st, like we would normally send out our actuals, it would still be due February 1st. 
So this means we wouldn't have a cash flow issue um, like we previously thought may happen because bills would be due May 1st. What would then happen after the uh, certification of values is done by vision, uh, which that's estimated to be done at the beginning of February, that's when they're going to submit it to DOR for review and certification, is that once those values are certified, we do another recap with the final tax rate for the fourth quarter actual bill that would be then mailed out. Okay. What, what? Along, along those lines, I have a question yeah. and then a comment. Uh, the first question is, anybody who received a, a, an abatement, that abatement would have reduced their their current tax bill to whatever the final amount was. Am I correct in assuming that their estimated Q1 and Q2 would be though that final number from last year divided by four, that would be what those two are? Are the abatements taken into consideration for the estimated taxes? So I talked to Nate Kramer of MS, MFS today actually about this issue. It was a question that had been raised. So the, all the adjustments that were made uh, during those inspections were made to the FY24 um, values. So if there were any changes in, say, an extra fireplace or um, there was a identified a new um, valuation to that home, um, that would be in the FY24 valuations. Um, so it's the abatement amount, but then those also would be changed by those um, changes in the system for those. Right, but for people, just for the sake of discussion, mm -hmm. for the people who didn't have any improvements and they just got an abatement, their estimated bills should be what the final, including the abatement adjustment, what the final bill was divided by four. That's what their first two quarters should be, correct? No, and there's also um, changes in the tables that are automatically carry forward. Okay. For it. Okay. The assessed value is what's used as our basis, right? The fun, what was determined, what was ultimately settled as their assessed value. Right, but, the, that, but, but then a value is only right. part of the equation. Right. So without a new tax rate, the, the, yeah. my understanding is that Q1 and Q2 estimated taxes basically are what your previous year's taxes were divided by four per quarter until you get to the actuals. No, I don't believe that to be true based on my conversation today with okay. Nate because when, when it um, turns over to the new fiscal year, there's automatic adjustments in the tables that are factored in to conditions. Um, and I'm not the ideal candidate to give you a full detail. I can ask. Yeah, can we get an explanation? Um, I, I would love to know because people, people are asking. People are asking. And the comment I wanted to make is, you know, I, I want people to be, I want to, what is today, the 22nd? Mm -hmm. I want people to know that I said it tonight that because of the abatements that happened to the tune of $1.3 plus million dollars, that all that money that the town didn't collect is going to be redistributed this year. So people who got like zero or very minimal tax increases, not what they would consider their normal tax increases, that's all going to be different when the final tax rate is set for this year on, and the, the adjustments on the valuations is now corrected. So people should be aware that if you got a minimal tax increase last year, that is probably going to catch up two years for you this year, whenever this year is, well, Q4 of 24. Mm -hmm. Just to be aware of that, because I don't want people to go scrambling and saying, I wasn't warned, I wasn't warned, because all that money should have been, because of the abatement, should have been allocated differently, and now this year it will be allocated according to the new valuations. Yep. And whatever vision comes up with, of course. Right, and I think during um, the reevaluation re process, we'll be utilizing vision to help gear outreach and communication on what to expect as well. And I think that's a very important component this year, is making sure that we get that information out right. early and let people know what to expect 
Yeah, I wouldn't expect Vision would be the ones who would outreach. They would give us the information, and this board and the Board of Assessors should do the outreach, but people should know what to expect. Yeah. To the booth, can you help us by asking the people at the back of the room to just take the conversation downstairs? I have a quick question about the Q4 tax bills. Is there a deadline for when they have to be mailed? And if not, do you have an estimated time of when they'll be mailed up? Because they're due May 1, right? It would be 30 days after they're mailed. Due after. So, so they would have to be mailed by yeah. April 1st. Mm -hmm. Because they're, they're due May 1, so the deadline would right. be. Right, so like a month before. Okay. And of course, we're going to have whatever is not to the makeup of whatever the first three now there's gonna be three estimates I know. It could the be. makeup of, for that for what the real tax bill is going to be all in one quarter so that's another thing people should expect so all right you have any other questions for the town manager related to the town manager report i had one other yep, um, related right. update too part of um what we needed to do i needed to submit a letter to division of local assessment to request an extension for the certification of values because typically they're due January 1st. So I did that this week. And next meeting, um, the board will need to vote on a letter for sending out preliminary third quarter estimated taxes. The assessors already did that, but the IGR identified it's also an action taken by the select board. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, any questions for the town manager? All right, 